E46 Turbo Build Part 4. In today's video, we're going to discuss and work on the fuel system. Let's do it. We're going to install some fancy Porsche injectors into the stock E46 fuel rail. But first, I want to install this fuel pump into the factory hanger assembly. The fuel pump, we opted for a Dietchworks DW300. That's that right there. They are sold in kits, and they include a hose, the strainer, random bits and pieces to make it work with the factory hanger. To make it fit the way I wanted to, I had to enlarge the diameter, as it is pretty small compared to the stock pump. This flows more, 340 liters per hour at 40 PSI. So for this application, it should work pretty well. For future projects, I would personally probably go straight to the DW400. It's a little larger and probably would be easier to fit into the hanger assembly. Step number one for me was to get this pump to be larger in diameter. I did so by dissecting a spare fuel pump assembly I had at the shop. I totally tore it apart and dissected the fuel pump, leaving just the very outer shield of the pump and then this inner sleeve here. Long story short, this inner part of the fuel pump, there were two holes on it. I drilled them out and I put threads into the holes. I then put a third hole in the front of it, also cut threads into it. Then using this outer part of the stock fuel pump, slide it together and line up the holes like that. And then I have these three bolts right here, which will thread in. And then I'll take the DW300 pump, slide it down into the assembly, and then you tighten these down to secure the pump into the original fuel pump carcass. Before assembling these pieces, like I just showed you, we're going to take the very outer shell and we will slide it into the original hanger piece. Doing so just like this, we're going to line up this notch with the notch in the plastic right there, and this will just snap into place like that. Now we're going to tear this one apart and install our higher flowing fuel pump. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice this hose. You can also use a heat gun for this to make sure you don't nick up the barb too much that's in there. Okay, so here is the stock fuel pump, and then for the fuel pump strainer, it should pop right off with a screwdriver or something. Being thin, hard plastic, it could snap pretty easy. There we go. And now for the bracket here, same thing, just going to kind of pry it off, maybe even just squeezing it. Ugh, yep, there we go. Seeing this gives you an idea of how I used it to fit the Deech Works. Basically, I totally destroyed one of these just to use the outer shell and the inner shell. Let's go ahead and snap this in here. Take the inner sleeve and slide it down in there. Line the holes up like that. You want to make sure you place the aftermarket fuel pump as close to factory depth as possible for the fuel pickup point because if you don't, you can run out of fuel whenever your fuel gauge still shows quarter tank and leave you stranded. Ask me how I know. I'm going to quickly slap on this fuel pump strainer. There's a little locking collar for it. That's a tight little bugger right there. There we go. Woo! There we go.
And there we have it. We now have a 340 liter per hour fuel pump installed into the factory hangar assembly. Also, if you notice, I swapped out this seal for a blue one because it's more soft compared to the original black one. It was real hard and mainly because the more parts that I use for my own inventory, that means I can charge the customer more. I say that because the owner of the car watches my video. So I almost forgot to install the level sensor. It goes in pretty easily. Just like that. And then the arm with the float just snaps into it. There we go. Now it is ready to go into the car. Take a look at this. It is now injector time. Time to spray some fuel into my turbocharged beamer. No, a little bit too much. Okay, anyway, so these injectors right here, they are absolutely beautiful. Take a look at them. They are intended for a Porsche 911, 911 GT2 RS, 911 GT2, 911 Turbo. They fit that particular 911 generation, no matter the model. There is the part number right there. They are a simple straight installation into the E46 fuel rail, which in this scenario, I'm using a fuel rail from a M52 TU engine using both the feed and return ports at the very back here. The original fuel injectors, they will not supply enough fuel as little as six PSI of boost. You will quickly lean out the engine, which is not good. So when it comes to boost, these original injectors are pretty much useless. Step number one, remove the injector retaining clips. Step number two, remove the injectors. Step three, install the new injectors into the fuel rail. For these injectors, the clips cannot be used. They do, they do not fit on these US fuel rails. It does not cause any issues. You can just toss these out or hold on to them, whatever you want. Well, well, well. Do you recognize this? The last video, we did some boost proofing to this M54 B30 intake manifold. Now in this video, it makes another appearance for step four, install the fuel rail onto the intake manifold. Just like that, we now have upgraded fuel injectors installed. Absolutely do not buy your injectors from eBay or Amazon. Preferably, you want to source them from a reputable seller to ensure that you're getting a genuine product. A little piece of information for you. You see this fuel rail right here, how it has two ports. This is only for the M52 TU cars. If your car is a M54, you can disregard this unless you're using this fuel rail. This port right here is the return, meaning on the car, it will get the blue colored hose. What I mean by that is you have these two fuel lines right here on the 323 and 328 in the United States. You have this black hose and this blue one here. The blue one goes to the back port. It is your return. The return on this goes directly to the back of the fuel rail while the feed port in there goes up and goes to the very front of the fuel rail. Here we have the view from above the fuel rail. Once again, this one right here is going to be the feed. It comes up and it runs the entire length. It then enters the fuel rail at the very front up there. That is your feed, which gets the black hose. Just like that. Okay, so with the intake manifold still off, I wanted to show you some things. Whenever you have the intake manifold removed, I recommend to replace these heater pipes here, the upper and lower one, if they are still original. And also inspect your knock sensors for any frayed wiring. These ones were frayed, so I replaced them. You can see bank two and bank one right there. And then also, this is the turbo oil feed line, which I'm using a special banjo bolt from the company called Rally Road. 
it is going to splice into the Vanos feed supply. They also sell the line itself, which goes directly to it. Whenever you go to purchase this turbo feed line, they sell different lengths depending on if you're going bottom or top mount turbo. Also, what I did here was I wrapped it in some rubber hose to protect it, and then I zip tied it out of the way so it's not hitting the intake manifold. And then ultimately, it goes down to the turbocharger to feed it oil. When it comes to top mount turbochargers, this feed line will have a 90 degree fitting, so it will shoot up and then make its way around the valve cover to the turbocharger. Okay, we have the fuel pump installed. I'm going to turn on the key, which will prime the system. There we go, there is one prime cycle. You want to do this multiple times. I have now placed you in the engine bay. You should be able to hear fuel rushing through the fuel rail. Okay, so as far as the fuel filter and the fuel pressure regulator, for this car's power goal, the original equipment is more than sufficient. So I'm going to return the fuel pressure regulator reference back to low vacuum or before the throttle body. The M54 cars, 325 and 330s, they put them right here on the stock F connector. And then 323 and 328, at least in the United States, this originally went to to this vacuum pipe right here on top of the fuel rail. That then runs the whole way up here, which had a rubber line coming off it. It then ran off of there, underneath the intake manifold to the CCV, which is this thing right here. We removed this in the last video 
to prepare the intake manifold for boost. So that vacuum line that I was just describing goes to that small port right there when it comes to 323 and 328 model cars. As far as 325 and 330s with the M54 engine, that small vacuum port will be capped off. This vacuum port is not seeing full vacuum. You might be wondering how, since this is fed directly by the intake manifold. Well, that is true, but this vacuum pipe right here that is connected to the intake, it is under high vacuum until it reaches this, this diaphragm. There is a big diaphragm behind this cover, which regulates the crankcase vacuum. So anything after that diaphragm, like this stuff here, is under low vacuum. Example being, this hose right here goes up to your valve cover. If you were to remove your oil cap with the engine running, it should have very light suction and not full vacuum like this pipe. Once again, that is because the diaphragm here is taking that high vacuum and it is converting it to low vacuum in here. So in return, the 328 and 323 cars in the US this port being used for the fuel pressure regulator is not under full vacuum. It's under more of a light vacuum, which is to why I'm putting this where the M54 cars put it before the throttle body. And there we have it. That is all for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. I will see you in the next one. Catch you later.